Hello, Tracy from Salem. <clears throat> I'm coming today with my final page in the Roxy Journal of Stitchery. Um, the June prompt being um, painted or dyed cloth background and um, heart for the focus. So um, I'm gonna use, uh, this was my May page and the inside of it is a double spread. So I'm gonna use the double spread for the June page. Um, and I feel like the, the prompt of a heart is so perfectly placed for June because June is Pride Month. And um, I am a loving and devoted ally and um, accomplice and supporter of um, several friends and a dear family member who are on the gender spectrum and the gender preference spectrum um, and the gender expression spectrum. So I'm gonna do uh, a pride page for this month and um, I made the background already, which is the um, f transgender flag, um, which I am dedicating to a very, very, very dear loved one who came out to me as a drag queen when he was about six years old. Um, and he is my, my dearest love. So this background is, um, a tribute to him. So that's the background of the page and these, um, the pink and the blue uh, fabrics are both um, dyed, fa hand dyed fabrics. Um, I, th I think that they are both from Steph Francis, but I could be wrong. Actually, this could be, the pink could be from Fiber on a Whim and the linen, this is cotton and this is linen, uh, which I think is from Steph Francis. And they're both hand dyed. Because I've cut strips of them, it's a little bit hard to see the lovely variegations. Maybe I'll try to zoom in a little bit, but I'm not sure if they'll really show up on the camera. I think you can see it in the pink. It's harder to see in the blue um, on camera. So that is my background, the pride flag, the um, transgender flag. <coughs> And then a transgender, transsexual, um, all, of, all of those expressions. That's that flag. And then for my heart, I'm going to make little pride flags for my heart. So that's what I'm going to work on in this video. Um, and then I had to figure out how I'm going to stitch this on. I made it, it's... I didn't make it quite big enough. I didn't cut it big enough. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not, I, I, I would make a terrible quilter because <laughs> I'm not super precise with my um, cutting. I do think about it. I just never quite make it there. So I'm gonna have to, so I've decided I'm gonna do some stitching on, on the um, edges to try to, you know, distract from my bad cutting. Um, maybe this is supposed to go this way. Anyway, the, um, the edge stitching, I think, is either gonna be, I, I feel like because I'm paying tribute um, in part to my beloved drag queen and um, others in that community who love flair I want some little flare. And so, so bright pink is their favorite color. Um, so it could be bright pink, which I think is not showing up as bright pink on the camera right now. It could also be this purple gimp because I just feel like the gimp, man, I love this stuff. It's really hard to work with, but I feel like it adds really amazing bling. Um, but then I do also have uh, these, these guys, which are, um, thread sampler packs from Steph Francis. And so it could be this, it could be this gold or this kind of bronze. Um, again, not sure if the camera's really picking that up. Um, it could be one of those, or I do have some gold threads. Um, so I might do gold 
And I do know that their favorite color is hot pink. So I'm, I'm leaning maybe towards that. And I feel like in some way it kind of goes, it's very playful with the trans flag. But for right now, what I'm gonna do are my hearts. Um, I think, so I love the idea that, um, <clears throat> oh, her name is flown out of my head, Rachel did, of using some batting. Um, so I, I made two hearts with batting and then I'm going to um, collage on these strips of the um, LGBTQ flag. And um, I think what I'm gonna do is, I love that quote from Lin-Manuel Lin -Manuel Miranda, love is love is love. And so I think I'm gonna stitch that on here somewhere. I might do, you know that, you know the, the stacked uh, love, which I think uh, Rachel did that as well, right? Where the L and the O and then the V and the E underneath it. So I might put that in the middle and then put is love, is love. I'm not sure exactly. Haven't gotten to that part. <laughs> right now, I'm just going to try this collagen. So I have my Misty Fuse. Um, so let me cut some of that. What did I do with my scissors? I did not bring my scissors to the desk, of course. And I'll tell you, I even th said to myself, go get your scissors before you start the camera. Ta-da! Okay, so here's my Misty Fuse. So I hope everyone is having a glorious June. It does actually kind of feel like spring here now in the Northeast, um, cause it's been rainy and um, a little bit chilly maybe. Um, I think I talked about this in some other video where I was like, when I was growing up, April was in the 50s and May was in the 60s, but we've gotten so used to global warming springs here where um, it's, you know, goes straight to the 90s at the beginning, like mid-April, um, that this, this spring, which was the regular old 50s and 60s, felt chilly. <laughs> it felt chilly. Um, but it is now pretty consistently in the, well, let's see. Should I even say that? It's pretty consistently in the 60s and 70s. Um, and we have pop-up days of 80s. Uh, so we're, we're getting there. We're getting to summer. So I'm not sure exactly how close I should cut this. Or if I want it to hang, I think I'm gonna let it hang over the edges a little bit. So then when I lay my fabric on top, um, I can kind of uh, fold it around. I think that's what I'll do. I've never done this before, so who knows what'll happen and what I'll do. Let me turn my iron on. And while I'm waiting for that to heat up, I will cut this one. So I hope anyway, wherever you are in the country or the world, um, you are enjoying some springtime and summer if you're in the northern hemisphere and if you're in the southern hemisphere uh, you are getting on into the fall and let's see just let's see uh, maybe even winter at this point it is June so I guess maybe even winter um, and I hope that you're feeling cozy and uh, like you've got what you need to get through get through the winter with some ease and safety. So, okay, so now. Um, now what I'm gonna do is, let me just do one at a time. Since I'm completely winging it. So now I've got my strips of fabric over here. And the flag 
goes uh, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So red at the bottom. make sure I'm, I'm on camera because I have a bad tendency to go off camera. I believe I am on camera. And then orange. So there's the bottom. So we want the red to show. And then yellow. Hmm, that is a very untidy edge. And I am going to sew along all the lines, I think, but I, I think I want a slightly tidier edge than that. So. <laughs> nice, Blanchard. Cut all the little pieces down into the heart. Well, that's still not very tidy, but we will put some stitching there, right? Because stitching, you know, fixes everything, right? And then blue. And then purple. So I didn't quite get it laid out high enough up to cover the top. So let's let a little more red show here. I'm letting it hang over the edge a little bit so that I can tuck it around. But there. I think that's a little more red showing. This green fabric is not really probably the best fabric. Um, it's very frayy, it's very thin, it's very delicate, but I don't really have any other good greens. It's supposed to be really like a bright green, a bright happy green, but I don't have that. I still didn't quite get it, did I? Now I will have done it too much. Still, hmm. So, wow, I wish I could hear you right now so you could give me some tips on how to do this so that I am getting this all the way up. I'm gonna just keep redoing this. This is because I just. Hmm. There we go. I wanted it to be hanging over the edge a little bit on the top, too. Okay. Okay. No more messing with it, Blanchard. Go. Iron. <laughs> So I've seen some really beautiful um, hearts in the Facebook group already. Um, I feel like people really got on this one really super quick. I mean, like a day or two into it and there were postings. And they're, they've been really gorgeous. So obviously this is a fave a fave prompt with folks. I felt like May was also like a fave prompt because everyone got to do their birds. They were so happy to do birds. Um, probably should have put something under some like silicone pad or something, but there we go. All right, now I'm gonna leave a little bit of an edge around
Ta-da! That's super cool! Oh my gosh, that's so cool! I really had no idea if that would come out or not. <laughs> but that is super cool. I love that. Oh, yay. Um, and it'll look even better once I've kind of hemmed it around. All right, let's see if I can do the second one just a little bit more efficiently. It's smaller. So now I have to worry actually about too much space between them. Okay, so. Red. Let's see, where's the bottom? There's the bottom. Orange. <clears throat> so I um, have I've been on vacation for about a week or two which is fantastic I had to say that um, so I work in higher education that's my day job that pays for the ridiculous amount of supplies that I have for my <laughs> um, my fiber addiction and um, June, May is a super busy month. You think, you always think, you always get fooled into thinking it's going to be, um, it's going to start to slow down because the kids go into exams and stuff, but it doesn't. It's just, it, it somehow the pace picks up somehow. I don't know how that, why that is. Uh, but then you have graduation. And this year we had three graduations because we had to graduate the students from 2020 and 2021 as well who did not get graduations. So May turned out to be a little bit psychotic um, at work. Uh, but it was so, so amazingly wonderful to have students on campus again um, and to actually be able to have a graduation again. We had our, our graduation party, which we haven't had in three years, and it was just so awesome uh, to do that. The best part is the parents, right? You just, you just stand there and talk to these parents and tell them how wonderful and amazing their kids are, which they are, and um, they love it, and the grandparents, you know, some kids... Um, it's always it's always amazing like some kids have like one person with them like the single mom who did everything for them and gave up everything for them to get to college and to put them through college right and you just have that mom and they are so proud but they, but it's funny because the single moms are usually a little bit more reserved about it a little bit more quiet about it right they have been working hard for a long time time to get to that day um, and they're a little bit usually a little bit more kind of reserved about it and then you have the kid who brings like the parents the siblings the grandparents the cousins you know they come in with like 10 people <laughs> to the graduation party which is just equally awesome right I mean it's like their own pep squad and um, it's really a joy to talk to grandparents. <laughs> oh, I really overcut that. Um, so, so it was really lovely to have that back um, and in place. Um, yeah, it was, it was a wonderful ending to uh, a tough year of uh, in school, out of school, in school, out of school, depending on what the pandemic was doing and Man, those kids worked hard. 
All righty, look at that. I mean, obviously that won't show when I turn it over. I am loving this. I am loving this. So I can't, so I, yeah, so I need to, now I'm gonna just sew on each line. Um, and I guess, I guess I gotta go find different color threads for each line. Or I just pick, or I just pick this gold. I just go with this gold. That, let's see, this one. This is, I think I got this from the Sue Spargo site. It's nice and thin. Um, it's very thin. I mean, it's probably, it's probably not even gonna show, really. Um, I have this other one, which is maybe a little gaudy. Uh, and yet maybe it's just perfect. Look at that, I feel like this one isn't even gonna show up, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, it'll show up. It'll be extremely subtle. Again, here's a moment where I wish I could like turn on the sound and you guys could all say, pick this one, pick that one. <laughs> um, here's where it's gonna fade is the yellow. And the green, it doesn't really show up on the green. But this is a celebration of identity, right? Pride is a celebration of identity, of, um, you know, being true to yourself and who you were born to be. And um, it can be really scary, right? It can be scary any way you look at it to live your authentic self out loud. Um, and this is a celebration. So I think we got to go with the bling. That's my take on it. Um, to celebrate all the folks who found the courage to come out and all the folks who are still in the closet to just give them snaps and say, hey, when you're ready, when you're ready, you'll get some, some celebration as well, but you gotta be ready, right? So yeah, that, I'm going with the bling. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't know if it's gonna get in this. This is a 24 chenille and I'm not sure if it's big enough. Um, let's see. Might not be, might not be big enough. The eye might not be big enough. All right, well, I got it on there, but you see how tight it is? It's just gonna strip the, it's just gonna strip it down. So let me go for a 20, uh, or an 18. That's gonna be a little better. Let's see, do I have something kind of in between? Not really. I'm gonna go with a 24. All right, and I did just actually shred the end of this, trying to get it on. Now, the other thing about this uh, thread is that it's going to, it's just gonna fray quickly. So I'm not gonna cut, I'm gonna cut really short lengths. Um, I tend to be, you know, on the, on the spectrum of um, cutting reasonable size lengths and cutting lengths that are way too long. I definitely end on the spectrum of cutting things that are way too long because I'm impatient. <clears throat> yeah, I'm impatient. See, look, it's, it's just trying to get it into do a quilter's knot is challenging. This is very, very temperamental thread. I don't even know if thread is the word for whatever this is, cord, I'm not sure. Um, I have to take a little lunch break, it's my smoothie. It's about three o'clock, so it's a little bit late for lunch. Let me zoom in here a little bit. 
So I think I think I'm just gonna do the running stitch. Not a, not a well. Let's see. Maybe I'm gonna do a back stitch. I think I want it to be a solid line. What do I want? Do I want a solid line or do I want a broken line? Let's see what we see. Oh, I wonder if um, I wonder if this th thread is gonna pull this backing through a lot. So the problem is this needle's a little too big to go through easily. Hmm. Do I want a solid line? I think I do want a solid line. Let's see what that looks like. I think that's better. Yeah, so I'll do a back stitch. instead of a running stitch. So that I can have a solid line. Yeah, not easy to get through. Tangles very quickly. Definitely pulling the back, the batting through as it goes. So it's just gonna be a slow process. So this is a perfect time, I find, to, um, to do some meditation. You know, the, the slow stitch movement, they always talk about slitch, stitch <laughs> as meditation. Um, or if you're so inclined, you can do prayer. Um, so I, I think I've mentioned it in previous uh, videos that my side gig and my, you know, kind of my heart work is that I am a spiritual companion. Um, some people call it spiritual director. Some people call it spiritual guide, spiritual mentor. There's all kinds of names for it. Um, but essentially what I do is I, I um, companion people as they... Um, walk on their spiritual path and I help them to put attention on the spiritual dimensions of being human whatever that means for them um, I have folks who believe in God and I have folks who do not and or folks who believe in some larger thing but don't name it and um, you know they have they have maybe some wounds from their childhood uh, religious upbringing that make it challenging for them to talk about, uh, you know, source or the creative force or whatever in God language. Um, or people who just, uh, you know, don't, don't necessarily think there's any particular um, driving consciousness to the universe, um, but who recognize uh, that there is something beyond, or something in addition to, I should say, mind, body, heart. That there's something additional to that. So lots and lots of expressions of the spiritual dimensions of being human. Um, and, and I companion folks and help them to put their attention on this, on that part of their journey through this life um, and to put some intention into uh, um, yeah, to put some intention onto that part of their journey. 
and uh, so anyway that is my kind of my heart path and um, so I'm frequently thinking about um, what what are ways that my that the seekers I work with can do that can put attention on the spiritual dimensions of being human um, and this you know is one, is one of them so prayer obviously and and meditation on the cushion uh, and walking in nature and um, you know there's all kinds of spiritual practices that people have been using for um, millennia to connect to that larger something um, and one of them I think is making art. I think that that creative spirit in us is 100% me and source co-creating something. Uh, and that, so I would consider this page that I'm making 100% an expression of my cultural and social values, i.e. inclusion, for all expressions, all human expression. Um, and, um, you know, my, my desire for there to be equal, equal rights for all. Um, but it's also, for me, this is um, a spiritual practice as well to make this, because for me, personally, making this particular page is about love, right? Which I think is kind of one of the core spiritual values, um, you know, of any tradition um, or, or not tradition. <laughs> you don't have to be in a tradition for love to be a spiritual expression. Um, and so, yeah, the very making of this is a living out of my spiritual values. And then also the making of this. Now you can see that this cord, we haven't even gotten to the end, but it has become very difficult to work with. It's, uh, it's definitely fraying um, and bunching. Um, so definitely I'm gonna have to cut an even shorter piece. Um, and it's just going to, I'm going to have to really be present in the moment and taking my time and not rushing through this. Um, and so that circles back to the fact that this can be a very powerful medita meditation tool, right? So I could have on music or a podcast or a, an audiobook or a movie or something or, or YouTube or something. And certainly there's times when I do that. I'm not going to pretend I don't do that. Um, but in this moment, I can also choose to put my, you know, so this is where intention comes into play, right? I can intend for this moment to be a moment where I practice presence. Um, I practice presence to connect. For me, this is my just my personal opinion. I can practice presence right now, practice connecting to source as co-creatrix in this moment um, and as an expression of my love for my friends and my family who celebrate pride. So um, that's how I'm going to continue. So. I am gonna have to cut a shorter piece of this gold thread for sure. I'm gonna have to be careful about, you can see right here, the, um, the batting keeps being pulled through by this gold thread. 
So I'm going to, have to be mindful of that. And I don't know if you can see this particular stitch is pretty, uh, how can I get it in the light? That particular stitch is pretty, you know, messy, not lying flat. So I'm going to have to be very attentive. So that's, that's how I'm going to work on this. And um, I'll, I will uh, post up a picture on Instagram um, when it's done, or, or, and also in the uh, Facebook for the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Um, and I'm excited to get these on here. Oh, look at that. Look at that, I love it. I probably should be stitching this directly onto this, is what I should probably be doing. Well, I wanna turn the edges. Anyway, something will happen, something like this. And um, that will be my, oh, let me zoom out so you can actually see it. That will be my June page, something, something close to this. So I hope you're enjoying the um, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Thanks so much for stopping by. And I hope that your June is filled with love and attention and creation. Bye-bye.